Civil Rights Bill, as adopted by Congress, March 1866, by the Congress of the United States. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Civil Rights Bill, as adopted by Congress, March 1866. Section 1. That all persons in the United States, and not subject to any foreign power, excluding Indians not taxed, are hereby declared to be citizens of the United States, and such citizens of every race and color, without regard to any previous condition of slavery or involuntary service, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall have the same right in every state and territory to make and enforce contracts to sue to be sued be parties and give evidence to inherit purchase lease sell hold and convey personal property and to full and equal benefit of all laws and proceedings for the security of person and property as are enjoyed by white citizens and shall be subject to the like punishment pains and penalties and to none other any law statute ordinance regulation or custom to the contrary notwithstanding section two and that any person who under color of any law statute ordinance regulation or custom shall subject or cause to be subjected any inhabitant of any state or territory to the deprivation of any right secured or protected by this act or to punishment pains and penalties on account of such person having at any time been held in a condition of slavery or involuntary servitude except for the punishment of crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted or by the reason of his color or race that is prescribed for the punishment of white persons shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor and on conviction shall be punished by a fine not exceeding one thousand dollars or imprisonment not exceeding one year or both at the discretion of the court section three that the district courts of the united states within their respective districts shall have exclusively of the courts of the several states cognizance of all crimes and offences committed against the provisions of this act and also concurrently with the circuit courts of the united states of all causes civil and criminal affecting persons who are denied or cannot enforce in the courts of judicial tribunal of the state or locality where they may be any of the right secured to them by the first section of this act and if any suit or prosecution civil or criminal has been or shall be commenced in any state court against any such person for any cause whatsoever civil or military or any other person any arrest or imprisonment trespasses or wrong done or committed by virtue or under color of authority derived from this act or the act establishing a bureau for the relief of freed men and refugees and all acts amendatory thereof or for refusing to do any act upon the ground that it would be inconsistent with this act such defendant shall have the right to remove such cause for trial to the proper district or circuit court in the manner prescribed by the act relating to habeas corpus and regulating judicial proceedings in certain cases approved march three eighteen sixty three and all acts amendatory thereto the jurisdiction in civil and criminal matters hereby conferred on the district and circuit courts of the united states shall be exercised and enforced in conformity with the laws of the united states so far as such laws are suitable to carry the same into effect 
but in all cases where such laws are not adapted to the object or are deficient in the provisions necessary to furnish suitable remedies and punish offences against the law the common law as modified and changed by the constitution and statutes of the state wherein the court having jurisdiction of the cause civil or criminal is held so far as the same is not inconsistent with the constitution and laws of the united states shall be extended and govern the said courts in the trial and disposition of such causes and if of a criminal nature in the infliction of punishment on the party found guilty section four that the district attorneys marshals and deputy marshals of the united states the commissioners appointed by the circuit and territorial courts of the united states with power of arresting imprisoning or bailing offenders against the laws of the united states the officers and agents of the freedmen's bureau and every other officer who may be specially empowered by the president of the united states shall be and they are hereby specially authorized and required at the expense of the united states to institute proceedings against all and every person who shall violate the provisions of this act and cause him or them to be arrested and imprisoned or bailed as the case may be for trial before such of the united states or territorial courts as by this act have cognizance of the offence and with a view to affording reasonable protection to all persons in their constitutional rights of equality before the law without distinction of race or color or previous condition of slavery or involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted and the prompt discharge of the duties of this act it shall be the duty of the circuit courts of the united states and the superior courts of the territories of the united states from time to time to increase the number of commissioners so as to afford a speedy and convenient means for the arrest and examination of persons charged with the violation of this act section five that said commissioners shall have concurrent jurisdiction with the judges of the circuit and district courts of the united states and the judges of the superior courts of the territories severally and collectively in term time and vacation upon satisfactory proof being made to issue warrants and precepts for arresting and bringing before them all offenders against the provisions of this act and on examination to discharge admit to bail or commit them for trial as the facts may warrant section six and such commissioners are hereby authorized and required to exercise and discharge all the powers and duties conferred on them by this act and the same duties with regard to offences created by this act as they are authorized by law to exercise with regard to other offences against the laws of the united states that it shall be the duty of all marshals and deputy marshals to obey and execute all warrants and precepts issued under the provisions of this act when to them directed and should any marshal or deputy marshal refuse to receive such warrant or other process when tendered or to use all proper means diligently to execute the same he shall on conviction thereof be fined in the sum of one thousand dollars to the use of the person upon whom the accused is alleged to have committed the offence and the better to enable the said commissioners to execute their duties faithfully and efficiently in conformity with the constitution of the united states and the requirements of this act they are hereby authorized and empowered within their counties respectively to appoint in writing under their hands 
one or more suitable persons from time to time to execute all such warrants and other process as may be issued by them in the lawful performance of their respective duties and the person so appointed to execute any warrant or process as aforesaid shall have authority to summon and call to their aid the bystanders of a posse comitatus of the proper county or such portion of the land or naval forces of the united states or of the militia as may be necessary to the performance of the duty with which they are charged and to ensure a faithful observance of the clause of the constitution which prohibits slavery in conformity with the provisions of this act and said warrants shall run and be executed by said officers anywhere in the state or territory within which they are issued section seven that any person who shall knowingly and wrongfully obstruct hinder or prevent any officer or other person charged with the execution of any warrant or process issued under the provisions of this act or any persons or persons lawfully assisting him or them from arresting any person for whose apprehension such warrant or process may have been issued or shall rescue or attempt to rescue such persons from the custody of the officer other person or persons or those lawfully assisting as aforesaid when so arrested pursuant to the authority herein given and declared or shall aid abet or assist any person so arrested as aforesaid directly or indirectly to escape from the custody of the officer or other persons legally authorized as aforesaid or shall harbor or conceal any person for whom a warrant or process shall have been issued as aforesaid so as to prevent his discovery and arrest after notice of knowledge of the fact that a warrant has been issued for the apprehension of such person shall for either of said offences be subject to a fine not exceeding one thousand dollars and imprisonment not exceeding six months by indictment before the district court of the united states for the district in which said offence may have been committed or before the proper court of criminal jurisdiction if committed within any one of the organized territories of the united states section eight that the district attorneys the marshals their deputies and the clerks of the said district and territorial courts shall be paid for their services the like fees as may be allowed to them for similar services in other cases and in all cases where the proceedings are before a commissioner he shall be entitled to a fee of ten dollars in full for his services in each case inclusive of all services incident to such arrest and examination the person or persons authorized to execute the process to be issued by such commissioners for the arrest of offenders against the provisions of this act shall be entitled to a fee of five dollars for each person he or they may arrest and take before any such commissioner as aforesaid with such other fees as may be deemed reasonable by such commissioner for such other additional services as may be necessarily performed by him or them such as attending at the examination keeping the prisoner in custody and providing food and lodgings during his detention and until the final determination of such commissioner and in general for performing such other duties as may be required in the premises such fees to be made up in conformity with the fees usually charged by the officers of the court of justice within the proper district or county as near as practicable and paid out of the treasury of the united states on the certificate of the district within which the arrest is made and to be recoverable from the defendant as part of the judgment in case of conviction section nine 
that whenever the president of the united states shall have reason to believe that offences have been or are likely to be committed against the provisions of this act within any judicial district it shall be lawful for him in his discretion to direct the judge marshal and district attorney of such district to attend at such place within the district and for such time as he may designate for the purpose of a more speedy arrest and trial of persons charged with the violation of this act and it shall be the duty of every judge or other officer when any such requisition shall be received by him to attend at the place for the time therein designated section ten that it shall be lawful for the president of the united states or such persons as he may empower for that purpose to employ such part of the land or naval forces of the united states or of the militia as shall be necessary to prevent the violation and enforce the due execution of this act section eleven that upon all questions of law arising in any cause under the provisions of this act a final appeal may be taken to the supreme court of the united states end of civil rights bill as adopted by congress march eighteen sixty six by the congress of the united states